guys. Happy Friday, y'all. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to Tea Time Unfiltered Spotify live show. I see y'all in the chat. Y'all are deep. I see the gifts and the memes being cranked out, honey. So I hope you guys are doing good. We have a lot to talk about today over the next two hours, okay? There's a lot of drama going on right now. And if you guys watch my video that I posted earlier, I'm kind of breaking down the whole beef with DL and Monique and Monique taking it to another level by dragging DL's young daughter into the fray. And DL's daughter, she's on social media. She's been on his show, uh, you know, helping to co-host. You know, people do know her. And I just think that what Monique did was not okay. So we're going to talk about this and we're going to talk about everything in general. So if you guys want to speak and, you know, have your opinions, make sure you guys raise your hands. Now, if you guys do not know, uh, Monique is now currently beefing with Vivica Fox as well. So this is another black person, okay, and a black female that she's beefing with. And Vivica Fox, I, I'm thinking Vivica Fox drug her, disrespected her. That was not the case. So I don't understand what Monique is doing here. So let me go ahead and play you guys a snippet. Vivica Fox was on the Wendy Williams show and she talked about it. So let me guys, let me play you guys a snippet of what Vivica Fox said, and then I'll play you guys Monique's rebuttal. I feel you guys. Listen, it doesn't matter where you come on, kill it and leave no crumb. Why? You understand what I'm saying? What it's like? You killed it. You killed it. You killed it. Then you turn and say. Next. You got next, baby. Absolutely. Right. And then you start, because, listen, I like both of these, both of them, and I, I, I think they're amazing people, but it got way too personal in front of the audience. Right. Listen, we've been in COVID. We ain't been able to do shows for, you know, they were having to do shows by Zoom. So the fact that people paid really good money, respect that. Respect your audience. Right. Do your wonderful performance. And I just feel like Monique has made so many strides in coming back that she's been getting her apologies from everyone for the years of feeling that she was taken for granted. Baby sister, I get you standing up for yourself. Ain't nothing wrong with standing up for yourself. Mm -hmm. But it ain't what you say, it's how you say it, mama. And I just, I just, I, I, I personally was a little bit disappointed in that. Right. But I definitely wish both of them well and just take it off of social media. Talk to each other. Okay, so you guys heard what Vivica Fox had to say. I don't think Vivica said anything bad. So now I'm going to play you guys what Monique and Zaddy, 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 had to say about the situation. <laughs> Why'd I say it like that, child? Hold on. Let me go ahead and play for y'all. So for those of you who had questions about how I handle my stage performance, listen, that's my stage performance, and I'm unapologetic about it, Vivica. I'm unapologetic about that stage that I go on. Vivica who? Vivica A. Fox. I'm unapologetic about what I do on that stage. What you are not is a stand-up comedian by far. So for you to have any questions about it, ask somebody that can really educate you on what that stage is, not someone that want to host and take female comedians around and get paid off of their craft. See, I don't mess with anybody, y'all. And all right, y'all just heard what Monique and Zaddy had to say. I know Zaddy did not have the nerve to say Vivica who, uh, sir Sydney who. We only know you for being Monique's husband and manager. Okay, you know who the hell Vivica Fox is. Don't play. Anyways, we have Lady J on the stage. She just made it. Lady J, feel free to mute your microphone. This mess yeah. with Monique, child has got the streets going crazy. I feel like I'm back in 2018 when all that Netflix drama initially happened. Mm -hmm. Well, first, mic check, one, two, one, two. Do, <laughs> do we can hear okay? you. You sound great, sis. <laughs> okay, fabulous. Hey, everybody. Um, I honestly, to be real honest, when I first heard the story, I just kind of retreated from it because I was just like, here she go. And then I'm mm -hmm. like, here he go. Like, come, why y'all outside? Why y'all ain't sitting down having a conversation? 
Um, then I kind of watch your video talking about that that background piece and then the whole calling out the daughter thing. I think that was absolutely classless. And I have to say what Lunell said, what Steve Harvey said, and what Vivica said really hit the nail on the head. Defend yourself, but it's not what you say, it's how you say it. I'm sorry. And if you're unapologetic about it, we have the right to criticize your behavior, period. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's funny that people, like I've said this from day one, folks love to do commentary and give their opinions on everything under the sun, from other Mm -hmm. people to news. But as soon as they're the topic of conversation, they're in their feelings. Now, you can't have a whole podcast show with Zaddy where you and Zaddy give y'all's opinion on everything. And then the second y'all go viral because of something she went viral for, okay? She got up on that stage and clown. And then now you're mad that people are doing commentary and having opinions. It doesn't work that way. You know, so for him to try and minimize a black woman who's been in the industry for years, who has put in work, regardless if you like her or not, Vivica Fox is that girl. Okay. Mm -hmm. She's been around since I was, you know, a shorty, you know what I mean? So for them to try and dismiss her and say Vivica who, and you're so upset when her commentary on that show was not bad, nor was it demeaning. Not at all. Not at all. It was what one would say. You know what he reminded me of? And this is for the older folk in the crowd. Um, remember, I don't know if it was Pee Wee from House Party. The little short one like, yeah, you know, always talking, always messing, instigating. short. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Man, I smell something, man. You smell something? I definitely smell something in my hair. I smell, 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 I
like her response just lacked class and just tact and she honestly didn't need to bring in the mother or the DL's wife or his daughter like that just like what the clip that you showed earlier in the video that you mm-hmm. dropped earlier today like initially when you sh- initially when it was shown on the live stream I couldn't actually understand what she was saying because it was so low but just hearing her tone and like what she was like you could tell she was being very condescending and it was there was no love in what she was saying it was just like okay if your issue is with DL you need to talk to DL like y'all are comedians y'all have been in the game for decades at this point I'm pretty sure y'all can get in contact with each other and hash this out like yeah, like I didn't like the Nothing fact that when when everything was brought back up, when she was getting, you know, called out for her actions on stage, she then tried to twist it and gaslight and say it was a joke. Daryl, you can't take a joke. It was a joke. Again, it's about your delivery. And if you watch the video, the way she was walking back and forth, you could tell she was hot. She was angry. She had something get off her chest. That's why initially when the video first went mm-hmm. viral on Sunday, I thought DL, DL had attacked her backstage. You know, like the way she mm-hmm. was coming off, like he had just confronted her, cussed her out, told her she'll never be a headliner. That is the vibe that she gave everybody when that first when that video first went viral. And then to find out they weren't even anywhere near each other. There was no conversation had. And then when she was on live with her zaddy, she admitted that she was going to wild out on DL regardless. So to me, this just mm-hmm. looks like a big ploy. One big grab for attention and payback. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that was the part that got to me because, you know, I've always like supported Monique and stuff. And, you know, I definitely do feel like female comedians don't get the same respect as male comedians. But like you can't just be you can't just be talking about people like that. And, you know, even in terms of like how you say, like I've seen comedians do um, Pearl Harbor jokes and they're hilarious. It's all about how you deliver it and your tone. Like that is very key. And that's something that she knows as a comedian. So right. yeah, that's all I have to say. She has no excuse. She's too okay. old for that. Right. Well, thank you so much for calling in, sis. Yep. Thanks for letting me uh, on. Uh-huh. Let me go ahead and bring on Raymond. Raymond Dunn, go ahead and unmute your microphone. Raymond? Okay, he must not be ready. Um, Kendrika, go ahead and unmute your microphone. Hey, lovely T. Hey, how are you? I'm doing excellent. I'm so excited. Hey, girl. <laughs> hey, welcome to the green room, sis. <laughs> Even though they changed the name to Spotify Live, you know, black folks, we gonna call it what you introduced it to us as. We still gonna call it the green room. <laughs> can you hear me okay? Because I live in the country, so I'm trying to make sure you can hear me because we don't have service out here like that for real. No, we can hear you. You sound good. Okay, so this is just my, like, um, this is just my opinion. Um, Monique's plight is not... Uh, in my opinion, it's not my plight because honestly, Monique is doing this for herself. She's not doing this for us. She, I honestly don't think that she care about black people the way she say because she's always getting into it with other black people. Like when she wanted us to boycott Netflix, I'm sorry, but I wasn't for the turn off my Netflix. That was not for us. For us, that was just mm-hmm. simply for Monique, and that was for her ego. Like I'm just so like honestly, like I understand she's trying to fight for black people, but like the fight that she got going on, it isn't for us. Like. I'm tired of Monique. I wanted her to win. But like all this back and forth and drama, it's just chaotic. And girl, like, sis, you too old for that. And I, I'm sorry, but I'm done with Monique. I'm not standing up for her because I defended her before. And like, mm. you know, people was attacking me like, oh, you don't understand. She's standing up for us. No, Monique is not standing up for us. She's doing that for herself. Every time Monique comes out, it's always something about her not defending black people because where was she? Like, I don't see her talking about nothing else that affects black people until it's her in the situation. Because mm-hmm. I remember around that time when she was upset about the Netflix and trying to get all the black people to stand alongside her. That was one of the that was one of the comments I made back then, because if you guys remember, there was an issue where Baltimore schools were dealing with freezing temperatures. There were like no heat in the classroom. So there were all these stories going viral of kids in the classroom wearing winter coats and hats and gloves. And, you know, Monique is from Baltimore. And it's like, well, why are you not speaking about that? You want everybody to cancel Netflix and, you know, demand that you get paid more. But how about bringing attention to this? 
Right. You know, these are the babies that you claim that you care about who are sitting in cold classrooms. And you're not making I'm not even from Baltimore and I'm covering the story. Right. Like her like, I'm just tired of her answers. Like, that's just my opinion. And I may get a tech for saying it. I don't care, but I stand by what I say. Like her plight is not I just like people be like, Oh, his plight is not No, her plight is not black women or not black people's plight. That's all I gotta say about it, sis. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> Definitely. You made some great points. Thank you for calling. Okay, have a nice day, girl. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> She's so sweet in country. You can hear her accent, Lady J. Oh, oh yeah, yeah she's guys, adorable. Yeah, she. You could totally good see it. She <laughs> did. She was real. Her accent was adorable, but she made a good point about the selfishness, and that's true. Because I was like, you know what? She's right. She'll sit there and talk about, you know, yeah, I'm doing this for everybody. Um, but yeah, like what happened around your town? You know, what about other situations? Like I felt like if that energy was better put towards real engaged social issues, I could vibe with you. But because you're always in turning it and focusing about how you're being mistreated Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. hey tea sippers to listen to the rest of this podcast please go to apple Podcasts, spotify google play stitcher tuned in or anchor fm.com which is a free podcasting site thank you guys so much for the support and stay tuned for the next video